overwhelmed by the thought of training your entire team? Whether you're onboarding new hires or implementing new tools, efficient training is key to your team's success. In today's video, we're breaking down how to efficiently train your team, ensuring everyone's on the same page and up to speed quickly. From creating structured training programs to leveraging technology, we're gonna cover the strategies that will save you time, reduce stress, and set your team up for success. If you're ready to streamline your team's training process, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell icon so you never miss out on any systems and productivity tips and tricks. Let's dive in. key piece to effectively and efficiently training your entire team is making sure that you have a dedicated space where you are housing all of your trainings, aka an SOP library. So I'm going to quickly walk you through what an efficient SOP library looks like. This is actually a free template that we offer, so I'll make sure to link it in the description. But let's first actually touch on how you want to store your trainings as well, because this is as equally as important, right? So yes, you're going to store them in SOP library, but we always recommend as an agency and as a company in general that you have one entire dedicated space to housing your resources, trainings, and templates. So we are in my favorite project management tool, ClickUp. This is where we store ours. You can also store them in other project management tools or just have an effective place to store everything, whether that's in like Google Drive and folders, documents, etc. But this is how we do ours in ClickUp. So we have a resources and training space in here. Then we have a folder for templates. So you'll see this would be like task templates, individual list templates, project management templates. Then we have a folder for SOPs, a folder for team trainings, and then we have other things like quick links and logins, employee handbooks, etc. So the reason we have an SOP folder, now this is our templated workspace as well. In our actual workspace, we have have more than one SOP library. If you're just getting started with SOPs, then you can just have one. Don't feel like you have to build out SOP libraries for every department, but if you do have a larger team, you do have a good amount of SOPs to store, then we would recommend actually having an SOP library for each department in your business. That way you can just share the SOP library with the department or team that needs access to it instead of inundating the entire team with hundreds of SOPs where only maybe 10 or 20% apply to that person. So in the folder, you would have like client management SOPs, marketing and sales SOPs, et cetera, et cetera, you know. So in the library itself, then you wanna have a dedicated SOP SOP library, like I mentioned, I'll link this so you can actually plug and play. This is exactly what it'll look like in your ClickUp. It also has an entire high level video going through how to actually use this SOP library and in depth tutorial. But in here, you can see this is where not only are you going to store these SOPs, but also you'll be able to have the status of, okay, we need to create these specific ones. These ones are in progress. These ones are ready to review. Maybe we need to make some edits for specific ones that the process has changed. And then here are the ones that are actually finalized and active. So you can see all of the SOPs in here. You can then see the active department SOPs where it's grouped by that specific department. If you have departmental SOP libraries, then this can be category instead. So if you have like a client management one, then it could be onboarding, implementation, offboarding, support, etc., and break that down into different categories. So you see that this is how they're organized, but what does it actually look like? So these SOPs could be either written and have a document attached. It could be, you know, here we have one of our YouTube videos linked in here. It could also be one of our favorite ways to create and store SOPs is by utilizing Loom. This is actually how we record all of our screen share videos, even this one you're watching now. And so you can actually just go ahead and drop a Loom video in the task itself. It'll show up in here. And that way, instead of having to have training meetings with your team, and even if they're recorded, you can have more bite-sized videos that team members can go to and not have to watch a 45-minute, one-hour training to onboard an entire 
client project. And instead, if they just forget, you know, for example, how to set up the client dashboard, then they can go to that granular training video that's five, 10 minutes. And it's going to make it a lot easier, not only to train them initially, but then also if they need to go back to these videos or documents or things to review them again. So the reason that we want you to actually store the information in this SOP task itself is that when you are actually then sharing this SOPs with team members and if these SOPs are in individual templates, then they're dynamic. And let me show you what we mean by that. Okay, so here we are in one of our actual process templates where you can see this is for a HoneyBook setup. We then have the client onboarding checklist with all of the subtasks that have to happen. So instead of having one entire video going, here's how to onboard a client, we have individual videos on here's how to request access, here's how to edit the client portal doc, how to order the client gift, etc. And then inside the actual task, we will link instead of the Loom video, we'll link the ClickUp task itself. So we only ever have to go and update the SOP in one place. We don't have to find where that video training is living all throughout our ClickUp, all in the templates. There's just one source of truth being the SOP library. So that's why we recommend, you know, having these stored in here instead of the actual template itself. So then you only have to update things in one place. Okay. So that brings me to my next point, which is great. We have this whole video and document SOP library and all of these uh, trainings. Now, how do we actually assign this to our team to watch them? So instead of a common misconception is that you're just going to come into your SOP library and you're going to assign the team members to it, you know, let them watch it at their leisure. Well, the problem with this is number one, you're not going to be able to put a due date on it because these are going to be sitting in the finalized active. You're also then not going to be able to see who has reviewed the video and who hasn't. So this is where we come to my next point, which is you want to have a dedicated place for team trainings. So the SOP libraries are where things are stored. The team trainings lists are where you're actually delegating those videos and documents for the team to watch. So same thing with the SOP library, you can have one team trainings list if you have a small team and a limited amount of SOPs, or if you have a larger team and different departments, you can have one of these trainings lists per department. So in this team trainings list, it's pretty simple. Um, we do have the task type training. So when this shows up on someone's calendar, they'll know that this is something that they have to watch. It's not necessarily an action item. And in here, this is going to be grouped by the Signy. It's going to have due dates, um, the status, do they need to watch it? Is it in progress complete? What's the priority for this? And then also there's a place to have a link because in team trainings, it might not be an internal SOP that you want them to watch. Maybe you watched a YouTube video that you thought was really great and there are certain key team players that you want to review this video to get that knowledge. Then you can link that video, you can link that article or that document and assign it to them in here to know that, you know, they're going to watch this and absorb that information. So not only is it a great place to assign these items, but then you can have a view where you also have completed team training. So you can see what every single team member has watched and gone through and what level of training they have. So as you can see, this is a list. Statuses are simple to do in progress complete. Instead of grouping it by the status, we group it by the assignee. And then we have start and due dates. And then the completed, here we don't show closed. The completed trainings, we just are showing that the status is complete. So this is how you can quickly and effectively delegate the SOPs. Once something is completed, you can then go ahead and duplicate this into the team trainings list. I'm going to click on do nothing. And now when I come into here, this is going to show up with nobody assigned. So I'm going to go ahead. If you want to duplicate this again, you can duplicate it again in the same list if you have to assign it to multiple people. So then I'm just going to say, okay, I want Andrea to watch this and I want her to watch it by next Thursday. And this is normal priority. It's not something that has to be high on her list. So now this is going to show in her calendar as okay, a training. And so now the beautiful part about this 
is when I come into my calendar, let's go back to the 13th, you can see that this shows as that training task type. And that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but this is going to be so highly effective to make sure that your team has places to not only review all of the SOPs and trainings for the departments if they have to review something back, these are also going to be stored in the individual task template themselves so they can always review that. And then you can have a place to delegate the trainings for them. And then you can also have a place to keep track of what trainings they have completed. So having a dedicated SOP library and a team trainings list is going to make your life and your manager's lives so much easier and have a clear system to train your team effectively. And that's a wrap. You've just learned how to efficiently train your entire team and set them up for success. At DeSilva Life, we've helped hundreds of agencies and teams build strong, capable teams through effective training. If you're ready to implement these strategies and elevate your team's performance, visit DeSilvaLife.com slash contact to book a call with us today. Let's build your success us together. If you like this video and found it helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to share this video with any other agencies or team members that could benefit from it. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.